We're going to look at surface area today. Now, we already um, you should already know a bit about surface area. You've looked at surface areas of cubes and rectangular prisms. And remember, what surface area? It's the total area of the whole solid shape. So, for example, if you have a rectangular prism like a matchbox, when you want to work out the surface area, you're going to take, say, the work out this rect area of this rectangle, which is the top of the matchbox, and the bottom of the matchbox will have exactly the same area. So you will just double that, right? And then these um, back and front of the matchbox, those sort of back and front bits, well, those are also going to be exactly the same, and they're rectangles. You work out the area of the rectangle and you double it, and then you've got these sort of sides of the rectangle, so this blue bits like that, um, and you're going to, those are both exactly the same, and they're rectangles, so you work out the area of the rectangle and you double it. So really the main thing in working out surface area is being able to picture each and every side of the solid you're dealing with, work out its area, and then you've got the surface area. So say we want to work out the total surface area of this triangular prism and we're told that the little triangle has um, the this side here is six centimeters and the little height of this triangle is four centimeters and then the actual height of the um, prism is seven centimeters. So it's seven centimeters all these long sides here. How do we work out the surface area? Okay, so if I want to work out the sur total surface area of a triangular prism, the main thing I've got to do is figure out what all the sides of a triangular prism are. So let's start with the easiest bit. The triangular prism has got triangles on either side, right? And so we need to work out the area of those triangles, and we know how to work out the area of a triangle. It's half base times height, and here is our base. It is six centimeters, and the height is four. We've been given that. Six fours are 24. Half of that is 12. So we've got 12, 20, 12 centimeters squared. And when we're going to total this up to get the total surface area, we must remember there are two, right? The front, this one, and this one, right? The next bit in this one that I'm looking at is going to be this bottom, the bottom piece that the thing, the prism is resting on in this case. So how do I work that out? You should be able to see that that is a rectangle and it's got a breadth of six centimeters and its length is this, which is seven centimeters. So the area of the bottom rectangle is six times seven, which is 42 centimeters squared. Then the last two bits of it is, can you see we've got the sides, these sort of slopey sides of the um, triangular prism. And there's one on this side and there's obviously one on that side. And because this little triangle in this case is an isosceles triangle, they're going to be identical. So if I look at it, it's a rectangle. I know that its length is 7, but its breadth is going to be this side here. And in order to work out how long that side is, I'm going to have to use Pythagoras in this little right-angled triangle. So I've got that little right-angled triangle where I've got a 3 here and a 4 here. Pythagoras tells me that 3 squared plus 4 squared is going to give me the hypotenuse squared. 9 plus 16 is 25, so the hypotenuse squared is 25, so the hypotenuse is 5. So this little side is 5. So the area of the, let's just call them the side, rectangles is going to be 5 multiplied by 7, which is 35 centimeters squared. And again, in total, we want two of these. So when we work out the surface area of the triangular prism, it's going to be two lots of the 12 for the front and back triangle, one lot of that bottom rectangle, and then two lots of the side rectangles. So it's going to be 24 plus 42 plus 70, which will give me 136 centimeters squared. The other one that we want to be able to work out the surface area is of a cylinder. 
Now, one of the best ways to see this is for you to get a toilet roll and actually cut it and you can see it. But let's have a look here in the picture and hopefully you can see it. Again, what you want to work out when you're working out the total surface area is to look at all the different sides, right? And then you work out the area of each of those sides and then you get the total surface area. Now, let's have a look at a cylinder. Now, the easy bit of the cylinder is you can see a cylinder has got a circle at the top and a circle at the bottom. So you've got the blue circle, which is pi r squared to get its area, and the red circle at the bottom, pi r squared, right? So as we say here, we've got two circles that we've got to include in the total surface area. Then if you picture your cylinder, you've got that all the way around the side. Now, if you think about it, if you think about it, that's the sort of cardboard of that inside of the toilet roll. Now, if you cut that cardboard and folded it flat, you are going to get a rectangle. And what is the length of that rectangle? Well, that length of the rectangle came from unfolding the circle. So it is just the circumference of the circle. And we know how to work out the circumference of a circle. It's 2 pi r, right? And what's the breadth of the rectangle? Well, it's just the height of the cylinder. And so the total surface area of a cylinder is two lots of the circle multiplied by the area of the rectangle. The area of the rectangle is the length times the breadth. So what's the length? It's going to be 2 pi r because the length is the same as the circumference of that circle and h the breadth is going to be h, the height of the cylinder. And so it's very easy. If I've got a cylinder which has got a radius of 2 centimeters and a height of 10 centimeters, what's its total surface area? Well, it's going to be two of the circles. And the circles in this case, right, it's always pi r squared for the area of a circle. And in this case, your r, your radius, is 2 and then you've got the rectangle. What is the length of the rectangle? Well, remember, the length of the rectangle is just going to be the circumference of the circle. So it's going to be 2 times pi times the radius. And then multiplied by the breadth of the rectangle. And the breadth is just the height of the cylinder. So in this case, it's 10 and if I go and put that in my calculator I'm going to get I'm going to get um, 150,796 so that'll be 150,8 and it's going to be centimeters squared if I round to the nearest um, one to one decimal place.